So the STEAM project in middle school is meant to be a transdisciplinary project where uh, students have choice in what they are creating, but it is connected to hopefully multiple of the STEAM subjects, so science, technology, engineering, art, math. The STEAM Fest is a festival that uh, middle school uh, students celebrate the learning uh, of many different subjects, which, uh, which helps the students to uh, learn even deeper on such topics. I think something different about STEAM from other subjects is that everything you've learned from other subjects kind of merges together and you're able to use all the skills you've um, gotten from other subjects and put them all together to create something. It's a celebration of design thinking in, and inquiry in a variety of subjects. And in my particular class in science, we've focused on environmentalism and sustainability and reducing carbon footprint because that fits in with our science curriculum. In sciences, we have a lot of ideas that are sophisticated and can be quite complex. And so particularly at the grade level I teach, sixth graders, we need something that feels very immediate and very familiar. So in our project, we started with uh, a provocation related to our school. Well, first we went on like a tour of like where some of like we use energy and stuff. So, and then we thought of, she asked us like how like we use energy and like what is important to us and like how we can improve it. They then were asked to think about the five categories of lead, uh, waste, water, um, electricity, transportation, human experience, and they had to choose one of those topics and think about a solution that they could come up with that would address one of those topics. And she told us, well, we're going to do this thing. It's going to be a design. It's going to be different. So our teacher asked that uh, we should have a project about Earth. So we thought about India, and then India, we, there's not much of water, so we wanted to make a project connected to water. My teacher made me interested in my uh, project because we worked on it at the beginning of the year, and I thought it was really fun, the way we made it and everything, and I just wanted to improve my project and to share it with other people. I think questioning was a big part of this project because they had to think about a problem they wanted to solve and I required them to phrase it as a question. So how can we improve? How can we? The reason we, we phrased it as a question is that then the next step is answering your own questions or trying to solve it. Um, I, for various inquiry projects I've done over the years, I think when it's the questioning part of it is too open-ended. I think you end up with questions that are all over the map, which can be really interesting, but knowing what the next step is, is hard. In this particular case, I, I gave them very tight parameters of what the question could be. So they had to answer, how might we improve, and then fill in the sentence with the topic they chose. I think questioning was the biggest one. Even the designing was like the biggest part. Questioning was sometimes it helped us a lot. When we said like, so how are we gonna make this? Making question helped us go on, and each time we had an answer to that question, we had another question coming back, and that helped us go step to step, step make like this design to help people get clean water. So I start almost every project with a mind map. So um, I'll come up with a topic or a problem or whatever it may be, then we often start a mind map together, but then I encourage the kids to develop their mind map on their own or with a collaborative group. Um, so if this is the topic, what does it make you think of? What does it make you wonder? Um, and then see where it leads them so that eventually, even though we're all sharing a common topic or problem, they've gone off in their own path um, to something that they are actually more passionate about and curious about. We chose this project is because India, since there's not much water and then it's always dirty water, we wanted to make the dirty water into clean water, reusing the water so then we don't waste. So we made this project. So we both 
um, really like to skateboard mm -hmm. and we thought how can we make that more accessible for everyone and more like involved in everyday life. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think the most important part of the inquiry framework, framework is wonder because if you don't have a passion for what you're doing, it won't turn out the way you want it to do, to what you want it to turn out. So I think the most important part is kind of getting into your topic and um, exploring it before actually starting it. that one of the most important roles that we have in setting up this kind of project is that we know our, our role as teachers in the moment is not done. After launching the inquiry, after launching the provocation, although we want student motivation and we want students to go their own way, we are not invisible in the room. And so part of what I spent a lot of time doing was working with students and asking them continued questions asking them to explain their thinking to me, having them articulate what they were thinking about, what they were struggling with. We talk a lot in class in the STEAM project around challenges and how do we overcome challenges. Um, there was a lot of problem like when we we needed to find a um, pulley, it's like a rubber band and then but it's like it need to be strong because it will pull our any to pull our body to become an electric skateboard but we couldn't find it like if we found it it was really expensive one like but then uh, finally like um, we got a little help from design technology teacher again. For the STEAM project if they wanted to use clay I encouraged that if they wanted to use cardboard and recycled materials that's fine so um, it all depended on those choices and then from those choices I would help guide them and ask them, okay, how are you going to use that material? Why are you choosing that material? Will, like, how are you going to assemble it with all of these different ideas? So uh, we made it by the plastic bottles, but then we were wondering that if we made it with another material, would, the, um, would it be different? At the beginning, I had a lot of questions about how to do certain things in my project, but while making it, I learned how to do it and Mr. Ryan gave me uh, tutorials to learn how to do uh, grass, how to make the video editing better and everything. So it, the sources that Mr. Ryan gave me were really helpful. So for the STEAM Fest event, it's really important for the students to engage with the audience that is coming to visit. So drawing the audience in um, to their project visually um, was the goal for art projects for STEAM Fest. What was, what's great about the, the Fest Day, STEAM Fest Day, is that um, it is, it, it's meant for an audience, so we had um, projects that are meant to do something so the the students were able to actually run their cars or float the boats that they made or ran the water through the water filter so it actually has a live element that you can see and so the audience could ask them questions we had some feedback forms they could give feedback there also was an element from art class because our project this year was also transdisciplinary with the art teachers with Miss Heather and Mr. Sujit and so first we did we we took like um you know those big big water containers? We took one of those and we separ separated it in two so that we could put uh, three, yeah, three different uh, stages. To make the purifier, we used the 
plastic bottles which have been already used once and we know that plastic can't dissolve in the ground that easily so we reuse the plastic bottle. And then we use some materials that it is very easy to find in the house. So we try to make try to make it very easy. Something I would do better is I think spend more time making our final product was the video. I think I would spend more time making the video more um, detailed and easier to understand for my viewers because I understand it, but something I would do was explain how I got the equations and what I did. Um, I think they were a little thrown sometimes by other students or adults maybe challenging some of their ideas, saying, well, I think maybe there's issues with your design. And so um, I think that's a good experience for them to have and I was just talking to them about it in class today is that this is what designers have to do, this is what scientists have to do, is that people might not agree with your idea and you have to think of how you're going to defend it even in the face of somebody's questions. So I think maybe if I did the next, this project again next year we might practice a little more with that because that was a bit shocking to them. I have them write almost daily reflections about like, okay, at the beginning of class what are your goals for today? What do you hope to accomplish? And then at the end of class, what did you accomplish? Did you reach your goals? And what do you think you need to do next time? What's going well? What's not going well? Why isn't it going well? Do you need to try something else? So every day I'll have sort of a different version of some kind of reflection to help them deepen their thinking about that topic. I think I, I would have tested again just to, to make sure that it's the best we can do. And I was also have added like pictures because we didn't have time to take pictures of like the thing. We had pictures, but we didn't upload it and make them like all great and printed and glue them into our project. And also what I would do is maybe make it a little bit more solid because yeah, it's, it's a fragile. wobble. Yeah, Sometimes wobble. It, it breaks. Yeah, so we I, we wouldn't make it more like solid and great to be. So again, I think it goes back to just constantly asking clarifying questions and having them, it's like an ongoing reflection, like every five minutes potentially, like did, did what I just do work visually, did it work practically? Um, so clarifying the message is just an ongoing thing. Um, and then in the end, with your final product, just sort of assessing, is this the message that I wanted to send and then going, I mean, potentially going back to the design process again and being like, okay, actually I need to fix this. <clears throat> um, I think reflecting really helped us because it helped us like think about what we worked on to provide like evidence to show how it helped. I think this year I would say what I've learned is what I was mentioning before that I want to prepare students better for the challenging questions. The, an audience member who's telling you your idea isn't feasible, how do you defend? And how do you also come out of that experience still feeling like it's successful? That success doesn't mean everyone agrees with you. Success means that you feel good about what you created and that you can defend it. So I think that's something that my own reflection I'll try to build in more of next year. The inquiry really helped me because it helped me create a new, uh, something new because I never did a video about mathematics before and it was a new unit and I explored a lot of new uh, mathematics uh, terms and a lot of new technology uh, terms because I had to make a video and I wasn't really good at technology and that really helped me and also was I wondered a lot about how to do certain things and that really helped me because Mr. Ryan gave me sources. Uh, we think that it was good because like it was, there were steps like first it was wonder, then explore, create. So it made us like, it was a, like a guideline to our project. Like we followed the steps and then we finally made our project.